Okay. Um, just a second. So this is a game created with uh, Calculus 2EX. Um, it's a 2D horizontal scroll running game. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay. Is the sound okay? Uh, yeah, it's completely fine. Okay, sure. Um, so it's uh, you know it's just like a normal game. It's a running game, and um, I'll just unlock everything. It's just <clears throat> upgrade everything. So this was my first project in high school. It was like a changing animals between animals to use all the abilities. Like a pig can um, destroy things. A uh, rabbit can double jump, and then a turtle can. Hide, and the scarecrow are, you know, flying at, flying to you. And you can just like, you know, do these kind of stuff. You know, dodge the obstacles, jump around until you get to the end. And then, you know, I had a really lame uh, boss with three patterns, you know, and uh, punishing them with or pick weights. Yeah, these were these are my games. These were one of the games. Uh, I created this with C plus plus um, for three months. This was my vacation project. And another one is. Um, I don't have a file with me. I just have a short video footage of it. So this is not actually a game. This is a game engine uh, built from the scratch with Unity API. So this was a um, tool. I made a tool to create a game. So it's like uh, I made a game engine. So you, I don't know if you guys know Scratch. So Scratch is uh, like a block engine block coding device, block coding environment that you can uh, code without typing, but you can code without just pulling off these, dragging off these blocks. And these blocks uh, have like functions. So if you can see here on the left top side, there's an airplane and I'm creating a code. It's in South Korean, so you guys can understand it, but it's basically if I press W, go forward. Yeah, so it's going forward like that. This was one of my projects in my uh, in my graduating year in high school. So not only just um, about video gaming, I actually made something according to that, like uh, making a tool that I can create a video game like this with you know block functions and block codings. And these are the some things that I did, and these two got uh, both got first place in the competition. Okay. So this is why I like game development so much because game is just uh, so interesting to anyone. You can, everybody have played game before. Everybody can relate to how fun they are. They can have some motivation with what you want to create, you know, what, what to expect. You know, if you just say, I'm going to develop a web, or I'm going to develop an app, you don't really know what you're talking about. You don't really have a clear vision when you're new to programming, but game, you can relate to any games you've played before. And they have like a apparent visual progression. It grows over the time. The project just gets bigger and bigger. Like, um, because there's so many ideas that you can put in and so many objects that you add on to the project. When you add something on it, it just changes the visual of it completely. It's, it looks very, um, you know, good. It, it, it's just um, appealing. It's good for your portfolio as well as your uh, personal motivation to create more things and expand your projects. And game development is really a great choice for objective orientation programming uh, because Game is all about dynamic programming and objective programming. Everything inside the game is object. 
the player is object, the bullets is object, enemy is object, every single component is object, and they always interact with each other. So you always have to think about that. And the last thing about game development is running time calculations and predictions, which means that you always have to think about when you're coding, what's it gonna look like in game when they, when they interact with each other in the real time. If Mario, you know, uh, jumps to a block, it could be a coin, it could be a mushroom, or you could die, or you can uh, kill Goomba. So you always have to think about these, uh, all the interactions and you have to predict what's gonna happen. And that's just a great practice for a programmer. And um, it's really hard to master something, master a certain um, area of programming like a web or app. But if you know any language among these, Java, C++, or C Sharp, you can access to any of these game engines very easily. They're based on uh, graphic interfaces. I'm going to talk about Unity later on, but I use Cocos 2DX as well. Um, they're really great for beginners. And because um, game engine is more sophisticated and uh, very um, carefully designed, and actually Unity was uh, first came out because they wanted an uh, engine that even graphic designers can make games. That's what they wanted when they first came out. So it's very pretty much easy for the beginners too. And especially if you have uh, finished uh, Mass 22D, which is C++ course, there will be not really a lot of problem understanding everything about Unity. And now I'm going to talk about some difference between C++ and C Sharp, since we are, we are mostly, everybody's learning C++ and Gaza, but now we're gonna learn about Unity, which uses C Sharp. So Dimitri could go first. Yes, yeah, so basically in C++, you know, that memory management is performed like manually by the program, you know, allocating memory when you create an array, et cetera, et cetera. If programmer creates an object, then he is responsible to destroy that object after completion of an object. But in C sharp, memory management is performed automatically by something is called the garbage collector. Garbage collector is a concept that is actually introduced in 22C, not in 22B so, so much, but like 22C. Uh, so basically if programmer creates an object and after the completion of the object tasks, you know, your C, C sharps code, C sharps compiler will automatically delete that object. So you don't have to deallocate memory for your objects. Uh, and second important difference out of many, but is, uh, it is a platform dependency. So basically C++ code can run on any platform. C++ is used for the application needed to directly communicate with hardware. You know, it runs from like calculators, you know, watches to, you know, to computers. It's really universal. But C sharp, even though it's based on C, just like C++ is, is Windows specific. So although Microsoft is working to make it global and like in recent, like uh, I believe in like 2020, they made it uh, open source language, but it's still only tied to the major system, which is uh, Windows. And it does not provide any, any other system does not provide any other support for C sharp. Next. Also another two important differences is bound checking. In C sharp, bound checking in array is performed by compiler. By mistake, if the program tries to access an invalid array index and it will give compilation error. But in C++, bound checking is not performed by compiler. By mistake, if the program tries to access invalid array index, uh, then it will give the wrong result, but will not show any compilation error. And uh, another difference is multiple inheritance. C Sharp doesn't support any multiple inheritance through classes, uh, but in C++ support multi C++ support multiple inheritance through classes. And it means that a class can extend more than one class at a time. So that's the differences. Okay, it's okay if you guys understood nothing about those, but now these are important. <laughs> So those are everything that's uh, behind the scene. You can't even see them, but now this is uh, something that you guys will see actually in your code. So it's about syntax. I don't know if you guys uh, have um, learned C++ yet. If you have, if you're listening to 22A, uh, probably it's going to be a little 
hard to understand because you're not here to array yet. But just um, if you learn about array and then come back to this slide, you're gonna understand. So in C++, if you make an array or allocate an array, you always do static. You can do it dynamically, but nobody does that. Everybody does a static and make it five, 10, five times 10, second dimensional array, create one. But in C sharp, you have to do it always dynamically, which means you're not gonna uh, make, you're not gonna say it's a five times 10 size at the beginning, at the first code, but then you're just gonna say that it's gonna be two dimensional array. And then the next line, you're gonna make it uh, five times 10 size. You're gonna allocate new memory using this new keyword. So this is two difference in uh, C sharp and C++. You cannot um, actually write five, 10 in this brackets when you are trying to define an array, <laughs> it's not gonna work. So this is the first difference. And then the second difference is that I don't know if you guys have listened to 22D. So when you are making class in C++, uh, you just put public and then colon and then all the variable names. Uh, that makes everything under, under public uh, public and then everything under private private. So it's a really easy way to do that. But C sharp, I don't know why, but they just don't let us do that. They, let the, they make a variable or function uh, automatically private at the first if you don't write anything but if you write public in front of it it's going to be public and um, if you want to have multiple public uh, integers or variables you'll have to do it every single time you'll have to write public every single time to make them all public and you can write private as well but if you don't write anything it's going to be private automatically so that's another difference and the last difference is not that or it's just um, you put uh, on the top of the your code in C++ shop uh, include IO stream sharp include CMath. We just use a using statement in C sharp and notice that we have semicolon at the end because it's a statement, uh, which means it could be happen during the codes. Yeah, so using statement is important. Using Unity engine and using Unity engine.ui can use them like that with, remember the semicolon. And that's about it with the syntax difference. You don't really have to learn C sharp to do Unity. It's, Unity is not really about um, learning C sharp. It's just understanding the Unity basics. And you can just know those three differences in syntax to start coding in Unity. And um, I am now going to start installing uh, Unity for you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, already installed Unity, but I'm just gonna like quickly go through it. I'm not actually going to like wait for the downloads and stuff. So I think it, this is being recorded, right? So you guys can come back later if you guys get stuck. So what I do is just uh, search Unity. Hub in the Google, you'll see a very first link. And then there's going to be two buttons. So if you already downloaded Unity with this first button, choose your Unity plus download, don't worry, it's okay. But I'm just gonna do download Unity Hub right now here. And you can press download Unity Hub and download it to set up. It's just one quick setup, so it's easy. After you download Unity Hub, gonna pop up open like this. And it might ask you to log in. I'm just gonna, I logged in with just uh, my Google account. So it's no big difference there. And after you sign in, um, you'll see this scene without any projects. This is a project that I just temporarily created. And if you go to the installs tab in the left side, there is gonna be nothing there yet. Or if you have downloaded Unity before, there's gonna be one version of Unity. So what Unity Hub is good is because Unity makes a lot of updates, like every month there's updates after updates. And sometimes if you update Unity, your previous project becomes a little weird. So a lot of people just let, um, a lot of people just let, um, 
the Unity version that they've been using to stay still. So you can have a lot of Unity versions. You can have 2018 Unity and then 2021 Unity at the same time. That's the beauty of Unity Hub. So if you don't have any version of Unity, you're gonna press add. And then there's various versions. Um, I'm just gonna press one of the things in official releases. Every Anything would be nice, but as 2018 or 2019 would be better if you have a laptop or that computer because these are going to be less heavier. 2020 or 2021 is a little heavier and slow. But 2018, 2019, they're pretty much fast. So you guys can select them. There's no problem for beginners, even if you select those. And if you guys don't have Visual Studio, it's much better to download one. So much better IDE than doing the default IDE. You guys can check on it. If you guys already have it, you don't have to check on it. You can just set it up after downloading Unity. And um, I will normally choose Android build support, Windows build support, and WebGL. So you guys can just think about Unity as your canvas. And then you can export it to any form you want. You can export it to cup. You can export it to your t-shirt. You can export it to your uh, phone case or something. So pretty much if you create a game, you can play it on Android. You can play it on web. You can create it, create it on um, Windows. You can play it on iOS, you can play it on Mac. If you own a Mac or iPhone, you can choose those two. And you guys can, you guys will be able to play your games around in those phone or computers. And then I don't recommend choosing uh, Chinese or Korean or uh, Japanese at all. They're really weird when they're translated. I And there's not a lot of sources in those languages. There are a lot of sources in English, but... So the, choose those, and then when you press done, it's gonna install for like a half an hour. So you just you can just wait with drinking coffee, and then you're gonna create a new project. And two uh, D, three D, it doesn't really matter because it's pretty much the same, but they have like different uh, template at the base level. And some manipulation for this workshop. And uh, Zoom says my internet connection is not stable. So if I you know, cut out or something, please tell me. And if anybody have questions, just feel free to talk to me because I'm not really a professor and I'm not really good at explaining. So if you guys have questions, you guys have to make sure you guys understand it. It's a workshop, it's a club, it's, you know, feel free to join. So if you first come to Unity, it might not be in this kind of sense. It might be like, look like this, or it might look like this. So anything would be nice, but I prefer to choose layout on the top right side. There's a default, this drop down menu. I usually go by two by three. I think this is much better. And um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna explain uh, window by window, one by one from the left side. So there is this uh, two main uh, window that looks pretty much the same right here, right? So upper one is scene. I don't know if you guys can read the letter and the down one is game. So let's see the two's difference. I'm just gonna play, hit play. And this is a little pre-alpha demo version of what I wanted I showed you earlier. So my ground is moving and I can jump with Okja, right? So that's like the only thing that I can do is a double jump, right? So this is how it is right now, but it looks pretty much the same up and down, but down one is the actual game scene that you're gonna see. It's pretty much what you're gonna going to see when you actually playing games. So you can interact and you can change things like right away so if you don't like the, if you don't like this uh, Okja's uh, position, you can just uh, click Okja right here on the same menu, and then move, move him, move him to the sides like this. 
Now he's in the center, right? And then you can just jump right away like that too. So you can always um, change the positions, change sizes. You can change size like this. Okja is much bigger now, like this. So this thing is just pretty much um, trying to, game scene is trying to see what will happen in actual games. And scene scene is just trying to manipulate uh, sizes or positions and stuff. And you can always, you know, play, you can even jump and pause. Now it's paused, it's like middle, in, middle above the ground. You can play again or stop, you can do anything you want. And that's the scene and the game, difference of scene and game. And you can see hierarchy here. I don't know if you guys can read that, it says hierarchy. And these are just the um, lists of your objects. So you, you can see your objects right here in the scene and you can like select them, but maybe it's, you know, it, it could be covered with something. So you can select them in this hierarchy tab. And you can see how they're related. Uh, for instance, um, camera is holding everything. So if I delete camera, it's gonna delete everything. But then I just pressed um, undo, so it came all back. And um, when I select something in hierarchy, you can see uh, inspector changes. So this is inspector for Okja. This is inspector for ground. And this inspector tab is just manipulating things with values. So I could just move my Okja around with my mouse, like this click. I can do that. But if I want to be precise with values, I can come to this inspector tab. And then um, manipulate the value. If I want to make Okja two times bigger, like exactly two times bigger, Okja is uh, 100 times 100 right now. So I can just change like 200 and 200. Now it's uh, two times bigger. Well, it's actually four times bigger in size, but uh, anyways. And then you can, um, you, it doesn't have to be like a precise number. You can just like plus 50 and then press enter. And then it's going to be get bigger, you know, or press uh, 500. It gets a lot bigger. You can you know always manipulate the values like that. I'll make it back to 100, 100. And um, you can manipulate the values in your script in this inspector as well. So if you look at the right side, I just make made it bigger. It's a project channel. You can see all the files that you've been using here. So there's this ground script I'm just gonna open. And then it's gonna open in Visual Studio. If yours doesn't open in Visual Studio, you can always go to the top left corner. There's a edit, edit tab, and then select preferences at the bottom. And then you can change external script editor from um, Visual something IDE and then to Visual Studio Community 2020. Two. I used 2022, but any version would be fine. And uh, when you press on the scripts, it's going to open up in Unity. That's nice. So if I look at this ground.cs, can you guys see the code? You can see like there's like 0 0.0075f, right? And then yeah, yeah. when I come back to hierarchy, I can see that ground speed is set for 0 0.0075 as well. But let's see how it works out. Now I can see that ground is moving with that speed, but I can manipulate as I play the game like in real time. I'm just gonna put the negative sign on the ground speed and now it moves backwards. So you can always you know, play with the values, you know, change it a little, change it a little, and find the perfect value that you wanted, like this. It's gonna be much faster, really fast. So, you know, you can always play with the values. This is the great thing about Unity. And then if you, even if you like change every single value that you wanted, like here, if you press play again, which means stop, if you stop, it goes back to the original value, 0 0.0075. So you have to remember the value that you liked. So 
I think 0 0.03 was okay. Oh, we're too fast. I'm gonna put it as 0 0.007. But yeah. You can play around the values like that. And then let's say I want to change some uh, jumping. So I think my jumping sucks right now. So I'm just gonna make it a little higher. But then I can't see the jumping value right here, right? Then I go to the codes again. Uh, here is the jumping value. I made it a constant value, which means I cannot change it. But if I remove constant and then save, and then come back to Unity again, I can see that in the inspector, there's uh, acceleration and velocity and back again. Now I can manipulate the value as I want. I'm just gonna put it to uh, 50. So let's see how it goes first. 32.5 was it? And then let's try jumping. So this jumps about this high. Now I'm just gonna make it 50. Now it jumps like uh, really tall. It hits the limit. So yeah, you can always um, code like this. It says 32.5 and 2.5 in the code, but because I changed it in here, you can always change it and manipulate the codes and always see how it happens. What's the perfect velocity? What's the perfect values? So this is the beauty of Unity and it's really easy. If you just start Unity tutorials or something, you're gonna get your first game project in a month or, or even a week if you're really passionate. And then if you get good and more good with this Unity stuff, you can go to competitions or it could be your portfolio as well. So I think I've uh, did, uh, did all of those. I think I covered all of the Unity basic UIs and interfaces. Um, now I'm just going to, what am I supposed to do? I forgot. Oh yeah, uh, I'm going to show you guys. Um, my Wi-Fi is kind of slow. Okay, you're back. Okay, so this is open game, opengameart.org. You can find any kind of like graphic resources here. You can, uh, these are all free and uh, you can use any of them. Actually, I use some of this um, this UI in Run, So yeah, you're free to use. They're really good for personal projects because for personal projects, you don't really get to have a lot of graphic resources. And there's even um, some sound effects and musics. So yeah, this is really cool website for creating games. And because this is like the first workshop, I'm thinking I'm just gonna stop here. Just you know how to install Unity and just basics difference between C++ and C Sharp. And if you guys have questions, you can ask right now, or if you guys lost in somewhere, you guys can always come back with the recordings. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to start off, James, uh, we already answered this in chat, but like maybe you can give some input on it. Is 22A just like a beginning of coding class or do you, do you need any experience for it? Or, and can you do can you do game development after 22A? Uh, yeah, actually 22A is like the minimum um, that you have to do for actually get, start developing a game since, you know, if you don't know uh, anything about coding, 22A is like the start of the coding. But if you completed 22A and you feel really confident about programming, I think you are really eligible to start making any video games. And I think making video games for your own would help you a lot. But you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not like a professor or I'm not like a professional game developer. I just developed game when I was in high school when I was learning C, I'm just sharing some experiences. But yeah, I think after 22A, you could start you know, touching some Unity APIs and you can really start practicing your skills with personal projects like this. 
so after what class would you say like it's it's time to start you know game development um well if you're comfortable with all the skills that you learned and you just want to keep learning and learning about some in like academic way like if, if you want to go to four-year institute university and start learning some more conceptual ways you can just do that but if you're like really really interested in like creating your own thing creating your own projects you can just start right up by after 22 a yeah i think i think as soon as you start your personal project it gets much better and better and you can improve your um, skills very well and I think 20, after 22A, you can start looking at some tutorials of Unity APIs. Cool. Uh, any other questions you can ask like either here or just in the chat? I just wanted to know, um, is people like uh, listening to 22A, like everybody here? Like if people are listening to 22A, could you guys like, Hold your hands up with the reaction. I, I think there are some oh. couple of people who are from 22A or who didn't even take the class uh, programming, but most of uh, them are from 22B and higher. And uh, yeah, I see here some. Um, in the chat put the name of Professor Garbastia. No, oh, they're asking like what professor would you recommend for 2020? Oh. oh okay, never mind. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can take Garbastia for sure. And but like here it's it's hard to get into her classes, so be sure you, you register for her in time. But yeah, if you can take the whole sequence with her. Only problem is that like if you're like visual learner, she doesn't have like Zoom. So if you can't like do classes without Zooms. Uh, it's going to be a problem because it's like it's like self learning class most of the time, but yeah, she's really good in explaining things. And you guys can always refer to the information that I alluded here in the course help. If you come to our Discord, there's this uh, guideline that I made for uh, choosing a good class. So this is a great distribution site, and this is like my professor. I reckon that you guys already know Wait, my professor really well, so I'll just skip that. But I don't think all of you guys know about this. This is a great distribution by Dianza. You can pretty much predict what he's going to be teaching and how hard it's going to be by searching it up. So for example, he is extremely easy. Um, there's a 70, uh, how many is this? 76 people listening to this class. And 71 people get an A. So, I mean, if you want an easy A, you can take it, but I am- Can you search 22C? 22C? Um, uh, could you give me an example of a professor? Or I can, I can search Manish Well, He was my 22C professor. He's not that bad. He's, it's just um, a little lower from average. He gives a lot of B. There's a lot of drops. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, you, know, you can like kind of intuitively see people's um, grading system and uh, how they teach. Because so if there's a lot of F or a lot of uh, drops, he's probably going to be really harsh grading. People will be like uh, mm -hmm. doing well until the end. And then they realize um, if they fail the final, they are going to get C or something. They just drop. Yeah. Very test heavy professors are normally have a lot of W's. Is there uh, any other? Uh, who's who's what's his what's her name? Oh yeah, Delia Garbasia. Yeah. 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 Is there no such name? not E. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he gives out, she gives out a lot of A's as well. I think it's a normal distribution. I normally think that if there's a twice as A as B, so B is nine, 
23A, 11B, 22, 21B. I think this is like the pretty average for Dienza professors. Mm -hmm. yeah, good professor, I guess. She teaches all 22A, 22B, 22C at the same time. So. What if like, because she has like A plus and A minus, I wonder where they go. Oh, A plus and A minus are not distinguishable in this website because mm. a lot of community colleges don't have A minus. They only have A, B, C, D, F. A lot of, a lot of them are, the is are a little weird, but I think it's better because you could get A plus, which means that makes you feel better about yourself. Yep. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, and the website that I just showed you guys, uh, you can access that in our Discord, so. Can you drop it in, in the chat again? Oh, sure. <sighs> Thank you. Wait, did you? Okay, it looks like like no more questions. Um, yes. We're gonna have, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I just said I guess, no more questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thank you everyone for coming. It was a pleasure to have you here. And like, we're gonna have our next workshop uh, soon. And like, we'll like post in Discord and like give you an update to, uh, through Discord. And also like if you're subscribed to us, you're gonna receive email from Google developers. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. 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 Right. Wait, can you guys stay? Like not like the core team? <laughs>